Hey, what's going on, guys? Joseph Bob Brewer here for YesFireWorld.com, and I'm here with Danny Vibe Sherlong, the runner-up at the WCS NA Finals and first-place finisher at the WCS US Finals. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, the, I'm really happy that I was able to do so well in WCS so far, and uh, I'm happy to be here in ASL, and yeah, I'm doing pretty good. All right, let's talk about a little bit earlier in your career. Uh, what was the first game you can ever remember uh, sparking your competitive spirit? Uh, the first game I can remember being like, oh, I can actually be competitive is I was playing against some of the known uh, North American talent, like let's say like Idra or Huck or someone like that back on NA server before I was really known. But I would say uh, the first time I really thought I could be competitive with like everyone in the world was probably the first time actually in NASL when I beat, uh, his, his name before was Hope Torture and he was like the top two GSL finisher in the open seasons. And then he ended up changing to Startail Rainbow I think I'm, pre I'm pretty sure he started Rainbow, but that when I beat, I actually beat him, and when I beat him, I felt like I could actually, since I could compete with someone that was a top two GSL open season finisher, I felt like I could, if I practiced enough, I could compete with like anyone in the world, basically. How'd you first get into competitive StarCraft? Uh, I actually was competitive at Warcraft Three, but I never got sponsored. I, w I never put myself, I never dedicated enough of my time to it. I just played for fun. But I could actually compete with a lot of people, and then I told myself before StarCraft 2 was going to come out that I was going to compete at it professionally, or try to at least, and then I eventually just start getting, started getting scouted by people that were had sponsors and stuff like that, and then that's just what happened, I guess. How did you feel your transition was from going from Warcraft to StarCraft? Uh, my transition, I think, was pretty good because I was actually pretty familiar with Blizzard RTS in general, because I played Brood War as well a little bit before, so I kind of knew how the game worked. It's just the, the real big difference to me was like, oh, I don't creep anymore and I don't have heroes, basically. It's just all units and it's just like harass or whatever. But uh, the transition was pretty easy for me. It didn't take me too long to, get, to pick it up. And then it was just more or less just how much time I could practice with it. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to, you know, go pro and try to make a career out of competitive video games, or StarCraft in this case? Uh, I told myself that, like, I was actually a WoW player before as well, and when I was playing WoW, that's when I first got the, like, I want to be professional, because I, a lot of my friends were actually becoming pro WoW players, and um, when I, like, when I was playing WoW, I wanted to do that, but a lot of my friends were, like, we made a lot of plans to do it, but we never actually went through with them, so it was kind of discouraging I guess and then I told myself the next time uh, a game comes out that I could see myself going pro at that was an individual game I was going to go for it and the next game that came out was StarCraft 2 so I told myself before it even came out that I was going to go pro at it or try to. Well you're pretty quiet as far as results for most of 2011 uh, but now that you've shown you know two top consisting places at WCS, US Nationals and the North American Finals and just falling short you know to Scarlet for first place at the last WCS what can you uh, attest your recent results to, or is this just the vibe that you've always, you know, felt you could be, or you're just now showing it where it counts? Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely think my results were kind of lacking last year because I was putting a lot of like high expectations on myself, and I had a lot of stress because of that. So I would kind of just like psych myself out at tournaments, and I would just underperform. I felt like because I actually had pretty good results on like ladder, and I would just, I like my practice was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But then I think in, in uh, 2012, that's when Diablo 3 came out, and that's when I just decided to take a break from the game and just kind of like let myself kind of recharge and not get so stressed out anymore. And then when I came back after I played Diablo 3, I was just like a brand new player. Like I, I didn't have a lot of expectations for myself and I didn't like set all these high standards. And I felt like because of that, I was able to actually perform a lot better because I wasn't psyching myself out anymore. And then it just, that kind of like carried on because as soon as I had one really good event, I ended up actually winning the first event that I came back to, which was WCS USA. Mm -hmm. After that, I just felt like I was uh, like, oh, I can actually do this if I don't just panic and get so stressed out and then after that I just had some really good I've had a good run since then. Those last two WCS events were perhaps your best results today you'd agree with that right? Yeah. Um, how would you rank yourself among the best North American players? Uh, I definitely think I'm part of like the top 10 but I, I wouldn't say I'm the number one best or like number two even though the WCS NA tournament says I'm number two mm -hmm. just because I feel like my mechanics they can be on or they can be off I'm a little inconsistent in that but I feel like overall between like all my attributes like my micro my macro my decision making all that stuff i think i'm probably in like the category of like top 10 maybe even top five because i i think my main problem is consistency i ha i usually do pretty well but there's always a few times when i'll just be like off and i'll just be terrible so i think i'd say probably top 10. how do you think you can work on that consistency uh just playing more just yeah i would say just practice more and just get it kind of like grinded out and then eventually it'll it'll I'll, I'll become more cons consistent over time and right now i think i am pretty consistent overall it's just there's always a few games i'll play maybe like one in five or one in ten where i'll just play like a terrible game what would you say to those people that think the na scene will never be able to compete on the same level as some of the other other regions in the world 
Uh, I think they're full of it. <laughs> 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 no. uh, but uh, I think NA can d easily compete with everyone in the world because, I mean, uh, there's like NA players competing with Koreans all the time. And I think if you can compete with a Korean, you can compete with anybody because I think everyone kind of realizes that Korea is at the top of the pedestal in terms of StarCraft 2 skill. So as long as you can, you, as long as you don't suck yourself out and as long as you can just play your game and there's even some people that have their individual styles that Koreans aren't even like, uh, like they're not used to dealing with. For instance, like back then uh, a couple years ago when Infestor style was kind of like, uh, like not really known and then like Cats and Destiny were doing it. Yeah. That was actually like one style that could really compete with Koreans back then. So I'd say just being creative, being on top of your game, and as long as you can you can compete with Koreans, you can compete with anyone. So I, and I think North Americans can. So I'm sure a lot of people would say that um, the only one of the only people or NA hope to win internationally at the U.S. Battle.net Championship would be Scarlet. Do you feel people are kind of overshadowing you a bit and some of the other? top NA players, Major, Adria, Huck, etc. And how do you feel um, when you won the WCS uh, USA Finals at Anaheim? Did you think you got the, uh, I guess, you know, the recognition you deserved afterward? Uh, the, the first part of that question being, can anyone else compete besides Scarlett? I would say definitely a lot of us can. It's just, I think it more or less requires like a good weekend because everyone has bad weekends, everyone has good weekends. And I think anyone who's going to that event in uh, the World Finals in China, if they have a good weekend, they'll definitely be able to compete with anyone in that tournament and possibly even take it. But uh, the other part of that question, sorry, I like, totally spaced out what that was. I just, like, how do you feel um, when you won the USA Finals? Oh, yeah, the, like, the, did you feel like you were you know, overshadowed a little yeah, bit or anything like that? I think uh, the, the way the format was for WCS North America, yeah. or I mean uh, WCS USA and uh, MLG Anaheim was, it was a little overshadowed by MLG itself be just because like when I was there and I won, I was like, the only match that got broadcast for me, I think, was the grand finals against yeah, Daisuke on the main stage. Right. And then there was there was one match before that versus Inser, which was like at 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, yeah. whenever the tournament wrapped up on Friday. But I definitely got a feeling like at that event, it was kind of like, uh, it was there for MLG, and then WCS kind of just had to get in and get out, get yeah. it done, get out of the way. Yeah. And I, that was kind of unfortunate because I was actually looking forward to like my first LAN event victory. I was really hoping for like a celebration and just to really express myself because yeah. I was so happy. But it uh, didn't really happen. And then it, there wasn't a lot of coverage, it felt like, for it. So I definitely yeah. feel like that was kind of like a lot of people might not have known about it as much. And they might not have like just got into it as much as like, for instance, like uh, the Canada right. WCS event or like even the European one that just happened. That was actually really exciting to watch. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I think... I would in the future I would like it to be more uh covered I guess I yeah you think you could have got definitely a lot more rec yeah, recognition exactly, for yeah. how big of a deal it was yeah well you you did qualify obviously for the world championship and uh how are you preparing for that and do you really think you can take that whole tournament uh I definitely think I can do really well at the world finals I don't know if I'll win it I mean that's it, it's going to be so hard for the the talent that's going to be there but I the way I've been practicing for it is I've just been I have a lot of matches that I've had between my WCSNA tournament and even now and then until the WCS finals, I have a lot of tournaments I have to do. So I'm constantly training and most of it is on Korean server. Like I just, I ladder a lot on Korean server. I play my tournament matches for whatever matches I have. And that's, even though it's a, it's a tournament match in itself, it's still good practice for future events because if you lose, you can take stuff away from why you lost. And if you win, you just, you know, you're on a caliber of still winning and you're still playing really well. And then aside from all that, uh, I still I practice with teammates like I've been playing a lot with Major and he's been actually helping my ZVT and that's actually why I think I beat Thorzane in the last NASL match I played was because I practiced with Major and I like talked about strategies that I could do and stuff like that so just practice on Korea and with teammates and all that. Yeah. Well, Mojie vs Pro League kicks off today. What are your expect expectations going into that and uh, do you feel you can you know make a really big dent in that as well? Uh, my expectations for Pro League, it's more or less, I feel like this is a really fun opportunity just to play against Brugor Pros yeah. rather than, like, above all else. So I don't really expect to, like, 2-0 everybody. Like, I just want to experience playing them and just see what it's like. So that's the main thing I'm going into is just to have fun with it. And then every win I get is just going to be nice for me because it's going to make me, like, even though I know, even though I know that they're not, they're not, like, seasoned competitors in StarCraft 2 yet just because they started, it's still going to be a cool feeling every time I get a win. So uh, I would say I'll probably do all right. I don't think I'll crush everybody, but I think I'll, I think I definitely can compete with them. And then, like I said, every win I get is just going to be really fun for me and a good experience. 
Well, you just brought up your ZVT <coughs> practice with Major before you played Thorzane um, last week at NASL. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. You're two in your division, beating both Targa and Thorzane, and your next opponent is Ryung. Uh, and you're in the same group as Teja and MC. Um, how do you feel your, about your play so far in the division? And do you think you can take the division having, you know, Teja, MC, and other strong players in that? Uh, I think my division is definitely, uh, it's, there, there's definitely two people that stand out above the rest, right. and that's, like you said, Teja and MC. And I feel like that's, to beat them, I'm going to have to play extraordinarily well, and the game's going to have to, they're going to have to go my way. So it's going to be really, it's just going to be really hard, and it's going to be uh, kind of lucky for me, I feel like, if I beat them. So... <laughs> I feel like in my division to do well in it, I got to get wins aside from them to just to keep myself up there. And I feel like I've started off pretty well by getting three points. One, uh, I got one loss against uh, Targa, so that took me down a point, but I still got the wins on the series. Mm -hmm. And then getting a 2-0 over Thorzain is really nice for me. So I feel like um, if I can just beat a few more people, I can definitely do well. But I think beating MC and Teja would be a nice surprise. I don't expect to beat them. What do you think about the NSL format so far? Does it suit your uh, play schedule? Is there anything conflicting or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, it, the, I, I feel like the NSL play schedule has been really good for me. I mean, I haven't really had any complaints about it so far because they actually they try to organize a good time frame for the players from around the world. Like a European versus a North American plays at a certain time. North Americans versus Koreans play at certain times. It's not all just like a set standard schedule like it was in season one. So it's I think they've definitely improved on like compatibility with compatibility. Ability, I can't even talk <laughs> with the players with like the schedules. So I, th I really like the format and I, uh, it fits my schedule, I'd say, pretty well. Well, yourself, TT1, Cats, and Major are here this weekend at NASL for a Sunday showdown for Heart of the Swarm. Uh, what do you think about the game so far and have you started playing it more than Wings of Liberty or you've still been balancing both out? Uh, I've played a little bit of Heart of the Swarm. I played it a lot when it first came out, but uh, I would say recently I've played maybe a few games here and there just because I've had so many matches I've had to work, like prepare for. Yeah. As, that are still in Wings of Liberty, so I haven't had too much of an opportunity to play it a lot, yeah. but I definitely think I can still compete with like with everyone else in Heart of the Swarm, and I, I'll hopefully have some good builds by the time the tournament happens to show. How are you liking the new units and uh, you know some of the recent patch changes? Uh, I I think the Swarm host used to be really fun. Yeah. <laughs> now it's okay. It's got nerfed kind of hard, but uh, I still like the Viper. It's kind of interesting. There's still a lot of stuff I could see. Like I have a lot of strategies I can think about to use that unit with, but mm -hmm haven't really been able to like execute them and because you have to have like perfect builds before that just to make it really work like work fluently mm -hmm. so i think there's a lot of unexplored stuff that's still going to be happening and a lot of patches that are going to change units and tweak them even from now so there i like the units they're pretty fun and uh i hope to figure some more stuff out with them i guess yeah well just between you and i even though i know root gaming you know it's your friends and your family and stuff like that but who do you think is going to win this weekend i'm gonna win <laughs> For sure. I think I'm going to win. I I think uh, Major hasn't played enough part of the Swarm to really, uh, like, to... Just because there's new stuff that's going to be happening in the Swarm, I think he might be falling short because of that. And then I think, uh, just overall, I think I'm pretty strong right now. So I, I think I I think I could take it, yeah. Well, any last words for your opponents on Sunday? Uh, yeah, just good luck, guys. <laughs> well, thank you for the interview, Vibe. Uh, good luck this weekend. Can you take this time? You can give any shout-outs or anything. Uh, sure. Just want to thank uh, my friends, family, teammates for all the support you guys give us. I really appreciate it. And then I'll just give a, a shout out to our sponsors, Twitch and the Rush Order Tees. Thanks for supporting us, guys, and thanks for getting us out here and stuff like this. And I guess also thanks for NASL because uh, I wasn't sure what to expect when I got out here, and they've been really accommodating with everything. And they're like, they're just like hooking us up with all these hotel rooms and money for food and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and they're also just giving us this event to do as well for them. So it's really cool. Thanks to NASL as well. All right. Thank you, man.